Today, we are making the classic Italian focaccia bread, but we're making it in small batch form. It is the perfect bread for the non-bread maker because it is so easy. The other thing I love about focaccia bread is how versatile it is. Today, I'm gonna to share with you my two favorite things to top focaccia bread with, but make sure you watch to the very end because I've got some other ideas for you. So today, we are making small batch recipes with big taste. Hi, I'm Leanne from yourhomebasemom.com and focaccia bread is the perfect addition to just about any meal because it is so easy and comes together quickly. Now, I love to serve it with my small batch lasagna, which you can find a link to right up here, but it's also perfect for dipping. I love to dip it into hummus or a mixture of olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Now, let's get started. For our first version of focaccia bread today, we are going to use some fresh herbs. Now, I love to go out into my herb garden in my backyard and clip some fresh herbs. Today, we are gonna use some fresh rosemary and fresh thyme. Now, if you're not lucky enough to have some herbs in your backyard, you can use dry herbs. We're gonna use some rosemary and thyme, but you can use your favorite combo. You can also use dried herbs. Dried Italian seasoning works great. Just use half the amount of herbs if you are using dried herbs. So to prep our fresh herbs, we wanna remove them from the stem. So we're just gonna remove the little leaves right off of the stem. We've got our oregano and we've got our fresh rosemary. Once we have removed the leaves of the herb from the stem, we're gonna chop them up. Now we're gonna need about one teaspoon of fresh herbs. If you wanna use dried herbs, you don't have access to fresh herbs, all you'll need is a half a teaspoon of dry herbs. And I find that the Italian seasoning herb mix works really well. We're gonna start with our yeast mixture and we're gonna need a half of a cup of warm water. You want your water temperature be, to be between 105 to 115 degrees. That's the perfect temperature for yeast to activate. If your water is too cold, the yeast won't activate, then your bread's not gonna rise. If the water's too hot, you're gonna kill your yeast and your bread's not gonna rise. So um, it's about the temperature of a baby's bath water, but if you're unsure, use a thermometer, a meat thermometer, a candy thermometer, and test your water temperature. We are gonna use two and a quarter teaspoons of a dry active yeast. Add that in along with a half a teaspoon of sugar, which is gonna kinda of help feed that yeast. We're just gonna stir it up and then I either like to cover it with a towel or just with a plate and let it sit for about five to 10 minutes till it gets nice and foamy and bubbly. While our yeast is proofing, we are gonna to mix together the olive oil and herb mixture that is gonna get drizzled over the top of the focaccia bread, which is like, the, meat, the best part. So I've got a tablespoon of olive oil and a tablespoon of water in here. And then we're gonna take our, what, one teaspoon of our fresh herbs, our rosemary and thyme. Now, again, if you're using dried, just use a half a teaspoon. Always that substitute for fresh is half dry. We're gonna add those herbs in here. We're gonna stir them up. And then we're just gonna let this sit while we make the rest of our focaccia bread and let those herbs infuse into that olive oil. Now that our yeast is ready, you can see it's nice and bubbly and ready to go. We're gonna add in one and a quarter cup of all-purpose flour into our bowl. We've got a half of a teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of olive oil. Now, when you're making focaccia bread, kind of the star of the show is the olive oil. So always make sure that you're using a good quality olive oil. And then we're gonna add in our yeast mixture and stir it up. I just like to stir my dough by hand. It's easier and this dough is a wet dough. It has a what they call a high hydration level in it, which is gonna make those nice little holes, bubbles that you like in the bread. So um, it is wet and sticky. So. Just kind of mix it up and then we're just going to lightly with our hands kind of do a folding motion where you just kind of pick up the dough and fold it over. And so there's really no kneading involved in this. So just a couple turns. If you think it's like way too sticky, like mine's a little sticky, just add a little bit more flour, but you do want it to be sticky. All right, now we're gonna let this dough arise for about 30 minutes, but before we do that, I wanna just add a little bit of olive oil into the bowl and then just kind of roll the dough into it. This is just gonna help the dough not to stick to the bowl, make it easier to remove when we're ready to pull it out. So just have a nice little coating of olive oil on it. So like I said, it's a, it's a sticky dough, but it's still manageable. You can still work with it. 
And then we are going to take a towel and we're going to cover it and let it rise for 30 minutes. You want to let it rise in a nice warm environment. If your home is a little chilly or if it's a cold day, go ahead and turn the light on in your oven and just let it sit in the oven with a light on. It's a perfect warming and proofing environment for your bread. All right, our dough has risen for 30 minutes. It's about doubled in size and we are ready to put it into our pan. Now, we are gonna use my trusty little nine by six baking sheet. I've got a link to it down below. It is the perfect size for this focaccia bread. I use it for a lot of my small batch recipes like those small batch cinnamon rolls up there. It's a great size. So, now remember how I said the olive oil is kind of the star of the show? We're gonna take about another tablespoon of olive oil and we are going to drizzle it on the bottom of our pan. And I just like to make sure it gets nice and coated. Use your fingers, get it in there. Because you know what? The more the better. We're gonna take our dough and it comes out of that bowl nice and easy because of that olive oil. And then we're just gonna kind of stretch out our dough a bit and push it to have it fill the pan. Now, initially, if you have a hard time where it doesn't seem to, it kind of stretches and then comes back in, just let it sit for about five or two, 10 minutes and let that gluten relax and then you'll be able to get it so that it fills the, the pan. We're now gonna cover it with some plastic wrap and let it sit for another 30 minutes or so till it gets nice and bubbly and about doubles in size. You could put it back in your oven with that light on or let it sit out at room temperature if your house is warm enough. So for our second version, we are going to use some fresh cherry tomatoes, some fresh Parmesan cheese and some fresh basil. In addition to that, olive oil and herb drizzle we're gonna put on. You're gonna to wanna to take your cherry tomatoes and just cut them in half. Make sure your knife is nice and sharp. There we go. So our bread has risen, look at that, nice and poofy and it's filled the pan. Now here is the fun part and the trademark signature look of focaccia bread is the holes that are in it. And these are the perfect place for all that olive oil to pull together and add more flavor. So we're gonna take our fingers and we're just going to push down into the dough. And you wanna push all the way down without going through the bottom, but don't be afraid of it. The more holes, the better. All right. Then that uh, herb infused olive oil that we mixed together earlier, we're gonna just give it a little stir with our finger and then we are gonna drizzle that over the top. And you can use your finger to kind of move it around if you missed a few places. All right, and don't forget we've got that olive oil underneath and it's just gonna create this crispy, delicious crust on the bread. Now, one more thing I like to do on my focaccia bread is I like to add a little uh, flaky salt. This is one of my favorites, the Maldon sea salt. I'll link to it down below. Um, but any coarse flaky salt would be great. And I'm just gonna take it and sprinkle a little bit over the top. All right, all right, for variation number two of our focaccia bread, we make it just like we made the first one, let it rise in the pan. We're gonna put those little dimples into the dough. And one trick I forgot to show you the first time, if you find that the dough is sticking to your fingers, go ahead and wet your fingers in a little water and then push it in and the dough won't stick. So go ahead. Put your little dimples right in there. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna drizzle it with that herb infused olive oil. Enough holes to get all that, hold all that olive oil. So, but for this one, we're gonna dress it up a little bit. And we are gonna take some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, but wait, before we do that, we're gonna put in the tomatoes. We've got our cherry tomatoes that we have chopped in half and we are going to take them and just push them down into the dough. And I like to do it with a cut side up. And depending on how much you like tomatoes, put in as many as you like. All right, then we are going to sprinkle it with a little freshly grated Parmesan cheese. And some of that flaky salt like we used on the first one. We're gonna bake this one just like we did the other one at 400 degrees for about 18 to 20 minutes. And when it is done, when we pull it out, we're gonna to add to the top of it some fresh basil leaves. This one in particular is so yummy to dip with. I especially love it dipping it in that olive oil and balsamic vinegar mi mixture, so good. 
and it is ready to go into our 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until it is nice and golden brown. All right, it is baked, it is out of the oven, and I just wish you could smell how good it smells. Now, at the beginning of the video, I promised you I'd share with you a few other things that I like to put on top of my focaccia bread, and some of them are uh, roasted garlic is delicious on it, caramelized onions spread over the top, all kinds of different kinds of cheese, pesto, and even sliced vegetables, really thinly sliced like zucchini works or, or squash looks, works really well. Just put it on after you've put your olive oil mixture on and bake it and so good. All right, to cut our focaccia bread, I like to just use a pizza cutter and we're gonna cut right down there. And for this small batch size, I usually cut it into about six pieces. Now, if you end up with any leftover focaccia bread, lucky you, but it makes great bread for sandwiches too. You can just slice it in half and use it for your sandwich. But my favorite way to eat it is dipped in some olive oil and balsamic vinegar together. Mm. So good. You get a nice crispy crust on the bottom and on the top, thanks to that olive oil. If you'd like some other small batch bread recipes, make sure you check out my small batch cinnamon rolls and my small batch dinner rolls by clicking over there. <laughs> and make sure you click down below to subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, share my channel with anyone you think might enjoy these small batch recipes, and I'll see you in the next video.